Number one. The Mysterious Stranger. This was an answer suggested by your friend Nate on our Discord, on the Robots Radio Discord. And everybody has encountered the Mysterious Stranger, right? He's one of the weirdest characters in Fallout. And that's why he's on the list. Because you know how he works? He shows up out of nowhere. He's wearing a trench coat, regardless of the weather. I mean, he even comes out in the Mojave Desert when it's really, really hot out. And he shoots at your enemies. He pops up out of nowhere, he shoots your enemies, and then he disappears. No word, no comment, no explanation. Has he been following you around this entire time? Is he a creeper? Is he somebody who just wants to help out with the cause? Is he a figment of your imagination? We don't really know. He shows up across multiple games in the series, and yet, even though he's a regular piece of the Fallout I guess DNA, you could call it, we still don't know much about him. Heck, the fact that he appears to be timeless actually adds to the mystery. I mean, he appears in different regions and different time periods throughout the Fallout universe. It suggests that he may be more than a regular human, and this ambiguity combined with his ghost-like presence and the random, random just nature of his help makes him seem truly bizarre. He shows up from Fallout 3 on through New Vegas, Fallout 4, and Fallout 76. And all of that is why the mysterious stranger is one of Fallout's weirdest NPCs. Number 2 Sierra Petrovita is one of the weirdest characters in Fallout due to her extreme obsession with Nuka-Cola. Unlike the other characters in the game who are driven by their drive to survive, or from some sort of want to accrue power and control, Sierra's entire existence revolves around her fanatic devotion to the pre-war soft drink. She lives in a house crammed with Nuka-Cola memorabilia and spends her time hunting down rare Nuka-Cola quantum bottles, often at great personal risk. Her obsession is so intense that she dreams of creating a Nuka-Cola museum to share her passion with the world, showcasing a level of dedication that borders on madness. What makes Sierra even more peculiar is her unwavering enthusiasm and cheerful demeanor in the harsh wasteland environment, which is contrasting so much with a lot of the people around her. She stands out in the world, filled with mutants and raiders and other dangers, and yet she remains unfazed and absolutely focused on this sugary delicious quest of hers. This quirky, almost childlike passion juxtaposed with the grim reality of the Fallout world makes her an absolutely memorable and bizarre character. Sierra can be found in Fallout 3 in the town of Girdershade and in Fallout 4 as a part of the Nuka World DLC where she continues her Nuka-Cola fanaticism. And that's why Sierra Petrovita is one of the weirdest NPCs in Fallout. Oh, and this one was suggested by Pumpkin. And by the way, if you want to get in on future lists, make sure you're on the Robots Radio Discord or you're answering the questions that I pose every week for the community on the Fallout Lorecast YouTube channel. That's how you can get your answers on this list and get shout outs on future episodes. Number three. Number three is Jason Bright, and this one is, again, from your friend Nate. Nate and Pumpkin have a lot that made this list this time, so thank you to both of you. Jason Bright stands out, no pun intended, well, I may be pun intended, uh, as one of the weirdest characters in Fallout due to his unique combination of traits and beliefs. So he's a glowing ghoul, and that's already kind of unusual, but his conviction that he is a prophet adds another layer to his strangeness. He leads the Bright Brotherhood, a group of ghouls who believe they are destined for a great journey, all because Jason believes that they need to reach the far beyond with rockets. This is fascinating and absolutely bizarre. His deep spiritual beliefs and his leadership of his ghoul companions stands out in a a very stark contrast sort of way, like a light in the darkness of the wasteland, right? The the wasteland's typically grim and cynical, and here you have a character who's hopeful and bright. He also has an eerie glow. I mean, he actually glows, and he kind of walks around with a prophetic demeanor, 
that makes him absolutely memorable. If you've run across him in New Vegas, then you definitely remember him. There's just something so fallout about the combination of spirituality and yet the science fiction of blasting off this world into some uh, great beyond. The combination of those things coming through a glowing savior type figure who's also a ghoul. You can find Jason and his followers at the Repcon test site in Fallout New Vegas, and I did an episode about that, so if you've missed that one, you can go back and listen to it. Uh, And that's where he and his followers prepare for their journey to the great beyond. Maybe you want to lend them a hand. And that's why Jason Bright is number three on our list. Number four? Four, 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 four. Gary, 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 Gary? Gary is number four. I bet you didn't see this one coming. And again, thank you to Bread Couch for this one on the Discord. Uh, Gary, if you don't know, is the collective name of many clones found in Vault 108. And is absolutely one of the weirdest characters in Fallout due to the unsettling nature of what goes on in Vault 108. And the fact that Gary is now multiple individuals. Each clone designated Gary followed by a number can only say Gary in various tones and inflections. Gary, 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 creating an eerie and unnerving atmosphere. The clones exhibit aggressive behavior toward outsiders, which you find out right away when you enter this vault. And it's the result of a failed experiment within the vault intended to test cloning techniques for potential military applications. I mean, that's very fallouty right there, right? We've tried to make super mutants. We tried to duplicate Gary. The experiment clearly did not go to plan, and it led to the clones developing a violent hive mind mentality where they all just seem to swarm anybody or anything they find threatening. This makes Gary clones particularly bizarre, specifically because of their uniformity. They feel like they're almost all part of one mind, or maybe they all have exactly the same mind that's been cloned into each of them. And if you look back at the history of the vault, which I've talked about in the vault episode for 108, you find out that it descended into chaos and eventually all that was left were these identical, hostile Gary clones. So you combine the story of Vault 108 with what's left of Gary and all of his clones and the madness of a vault that contains all of the same people saying only Gary. And you can see why this is one of the weirdest things in the games. Gary clones can only be found in Fallout 3 in Vault 108, which is in the Capital Wasteland. And that's why this is one of our weirdest NPCs, or they are among our weirdest NPCs. Number five. Some people like gardening. I'm not sure that Harold enjoyed gardening before he realized that he was growing into a tree. But there you go. Harold is on our list of weirdest NPCs. And Harold is a definitely unique and uh, I guess you could say evolving character in the games. Uh, initially, he was a human. He was exposed to the FEV, the forced evolutionary virus, and that combined with subsequent radiation led to his transforming into a ghoul-like being, although he's not actually a ghoul, with a tree growing out of his head, and the tree's name is Bob. This unusual combination of human and flora, which is something that I think is absolutely unique with Harold, alongside his humorous and philosophical outlook on life because he's got such a unique personality make him an extraordinary and bizarre character his story intertwines with major events and places throughout the games starting with the earliest fallout and going all the way through to fallout 3 and this cements him as a legendary and super weird character He goes from being a significant character, somebody who wanders around, to somebody who is rooted in the ground and is quite the tragic and dark dilemma that you have to deal with in Fallout 3. 
In fact, he's so weird when it comes to just kind of the weird and wacky nature of the way that some things in Fallout just don't even make any sense, that he seems like the kind of character that if you were to put him in, say, 76 today, people would revolt about. They'd be like, oh my god, I can't believe they would put something wacky and lore-breaking in the game if he didn't already exist and was in the game since Fallout 1. So you add all of that stuff together, and he becomes one of the weirdest characters in the wasteland. You can find him in Fallout, in Fallout 2, in Fallout 3, and then he's also briefly uh, in Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, which is not one of the better games if you want to go check that one out. In Fallout 3, you can go visit him at the Oasis. You can go see him as a big tree and meet his cult-like community. And that's why Harold is one of the weirdest NPCs in the wasteland. Number 6. I'm not sure if this counts as one character or two characters, but I'm going to just go with one and explain it. Dog slash God. And this is a character suggested or characters suggested by Pumpkin. So again, another one goes to Pumpkin. Pumpkin, you had a bunch of them. You just kind of listed a whole bunch of them and they were really good ideas. So Dog and God are one of the most unusual characters in Fallout because they exemplify the duality and psychological complexity that the series is known for. Now get this. In Fallout New Vegas, in the Dead Money DLC, this character is a nightkin with a split personality disorder, where Dog is its like this submissive, childlike persona, and God is the dominating, like, calculating counterpoint to that persona. This is an internal conflict between those two personalities and a character like this with split personalities the psychological dilemma of that shows a few things i mean first and foremost it shows the toll of just living in the wasteland and dealing with all the harshness and all the things that everybody has to deal with in the wasteland and that toll on on your psyche on your psych psychological well-being i guess you could say but the fact that this is a nightkin super mutant also points to the impact of the master's experiments. If a character like dog slash God can be so broken like this, then clearly other super mutants are broken too, which we see in the series. We see other super mutants with complex personality disorders. You have to wonder the ones that just end up as fodder at the end of your gun or uh, at the end of an explosive, are they suffering similar kinds of psychological dilemmas too? And the personality switching between Dog and God here is very extreme. You go from the obedient Dog, who's kind of a pitiful character, to God's ruthless, strategic mind. And it adds psychological horror and depth that you rarely see in video game characters, or at least outside of a few specific types of games that deal with these kinds of dilemmas. So when you combine the constant battle for control between these two personalities all in one body, and then you tack on the tragic backstory, and then the fact that you as a player have to navigate dealing with this character in the game, in the DLC, then it makes this a very memorable and weird NPC. You can find Dog and God in New Vegas at the Sierra Madre Casino during the Dead Money DLC, and that's why... Dog slash God is one of our weirdest NPCs in Fallout. Number seven. We got another good one from Pumpkin. Dave from the from the Republic of Dave. Dave is in Fallout 3, and he's one of the weirdest characters in the series due to his delusional and egocentric nature. As the self-proclaimed president of the Republic of Dave. He rules over a small, isolated community with an authoritarian, yet comically inept leadership style. Dave's obsession with his own power and the absurdity of his, quote, nation, because it's the nation of Dave, even though it's a small group of people, uh, complete with elections that he always wins, highlights the dark humor and satirical elements of the Fallout series, but also points to some of the real world dilemmas of authoritarian leadership out here, you know, where the rest of us live. 
It's one of those dark humor kinds of things that's all too real all at the same time. This bizarre setup of like a micronation in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, along with Dave's unwavering belief in his own grandeur, makes him stand out as absolutely a weird character in the wasteland his intentions with the player and the quirky residents of the republic of dave uh, they add an extra i don't know unique or surreal experience that underscores so much of the game's critique of political power and the limitations of human beings when it comes to determining our leaders I can't tell you how many times I've had people reach out to me on this show about like, oh, you're being political. Why are you making Fallout political? Have you played Fallout? Let me introduce you to the Republic of Dave. And so all of those reasons come together to show why Dave in Fallout 3 in the Capital Wasteland at the Republic of Dave, because that's the location. It's up on the northeastern part of the map, is one of our weirdest NPCs. Henry! This one comes from Pumpkin as well. And by the way, I'm not sure, Pumpkin, why so many of yours got on here. Maybe you and I just jive with these. Maybe you got in earlier because some people did suggest these other than you, but you just were the first person to do it. Uh, But thank you for all these suggestions. This one is the fake Preston Garvey. And I mean, I don't know if I have to say too much more than that for you to realize why this is one of the weirdest NPCs in the wasteland. But here, let's get into it. You can find, of course, Preston Garvey in Fallout 4 and the fake Preston Garvey in Fallout 4. He's a character who mimics the Minutemen leader, but he does it in a way that feels kind of unsettling and comical. It's almost like when you first meet him, you're like, wait a minute, hold on. You're immediately suspicious, or at least I was, but I didn't realize right away what was wrong. He dresses a lot like Preston Garvey. He attempts to give you quests, which of course is a self-referential joke on the idea that Preston just keeps giving you quests. It's like uh, the developers already understood that people were going to meme all about Preston Garvey and another settlement need your help and all that stuff. But this guy is kind of the lantern hanging on the joke already. He's telling us, hey, you've got another quest and somehow expects us not to notice that he's not actually Preston Garvey. He's got this like bizarre impersonation. It adds this surreal humor to the game. And it also makes players question the nature of their encounters in the wasteland if there can be a fake preston garvey out there then what else is around any corner his presence alone highlights the game's self-awareness and its willingness to play with its own mythology it provides a unique experience for fans and basically is in on the joke with you this is a weird blend of in-game parody and character mimicry and it stands out as a very peculiar and yet memorable moment in Fallout 4. You can find him all sorts of different locations throughout the wasteland, but only in Fallout 4. And outside of that, we really don't know who he is, what his deal is, why he's even doing this, why even choose Preston Garvey. It's so odd. And that's why the fake Preston Garvey is one of our weirdest NPCs in Fallout. La 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 number nine. All right, just two more left, and both of these were suggestions by Chip Monk, who helps edit some of the videos up on the YouTube channel. Chip, thank you so much for these suggestions. All right, let's talk about the toaster from Old World Blues. Now, the toaster is clearly one of the weirdest characters in the Fallout universe, and obviously it's not a person, although these are just NPCs. They don't have to be people. This is what appears to be an innocuous kitchen appliance, but it's actually a psychopathic AI with delusions of grandeur and an insatiable desire to burn the world. What makes the toaster truly bizarre is its over-the-top personality. It combines megalo, me, megalomaniacal, that's a word, megalomaniacal ambitions, uh, kind of like Dave, with the limited capabilities of being a device that's just there to toast your bread. Its dialogue is filled with hilariously violent threats and these grand plans for world domination. 
And it's all delivered with the enthusiasm of a malfunctioning appliance. Figure out how to tap into the main reactors. I will burn the world. The toaster's weirdness is amplified by the contrast between its mundane form and its apocalyptic aspirations. You should be afraid. I am the scourge of all small appliances and the boogeyman that keeps lesser toasters awake at night. It's a perfect encapsulation of the dark humor that permeates Fallout. The toaster basically just takes artificial intelligence gone wrong, you know, something like the Terminator, and just puts it to absurd extremes. You know, like what if the Terminator was just a toaster, right? And then there's the fact that the uh, this appliance is treated like a character on par with other NPCs. And it adds this weird kind of surreal charm because it's a toaster. It's kind of cute. It makes it stand out in the world, especially among a bunch of things that are already strange and weird, which is notable. The toaster itself appears in Fallout New Vegas in the Old World Blues DLC. And you can find it in the sink, which is a special player housing area in the Big MT research facility. It's one of several AI personalities that inhabit various uh, appliances in the sink and each have their own quirky characteristics. And that's why the toaster is one of our weirdest NPCs. Number 10. Before we get to number 10, just a reminder, if you would like to chime in about future lists, then make sure you're on the Robots Radio Discord or make sure that you're following us on the uh, Fallout Lorecast YouTube channel. Also, if you think that there's something that should be on this list that I didn't mention, or you clearly know which of these is the weirdest on this list, please comment and let us know. All right, let's talk about number 10. Billy, the kid in a fridge. I love that his name's Billy, like Billy the Kid, but in the fridge. Now, this is a young ghoul whose story defies logic in some ways, and it pushes the boundaries for what the game's lore can do in some bizarre ways. Trapped in a refrigerator for over 200 years since the Great War, Billy somehow survives without food or water or human contact, which has created a lot of debate over the years about the nature of ghouls and how that actually works. So Billy's extreme case of isolation, both from other individuals, but also from basic nutrients and moisture, raises a lot of questions about how ghoul physiology actually works. How does their immortality work? Some would even argue that he's a walking contradiction in the Fallout world, where we have examples of ghouls who don't seem to function this way. Now, what makes Billy even stranger is the juxtaposition of somebody who has been through such a terrible situation and the grim realities of the post-apocalyptic wasteland. And this is something I mentioned with some of the other characters. Everything in the wasteland is so dark and terrible, and yet Billy seems to preserve a childlike innocence and optimism while literally being trapped in a box surviving nuclear fallout, and then just sitting in the wasteland for 200 years. And his existence, just, just the fact that he's around, serves as a reminder, a surreal reminder of the pre-war world, frozen in time like him in an icebox or refrigerator, but go with me here on the analogy, uh, creating a narrative that's equal parts both comical and absolutely tragic. And is 100% Fallout. He appears in Fallout 4. You can find him trapped inside the refrigerator located south of the University Point in the Commonwealth. And interacting with the fridge initiates the quest, Kid in a Fridge, where the player has the opportunity to reunite Billy with his ghoul parents. Or, in a much darker turn of events, sell him into slavery. And that's why Billy the Kid in the Fridge is one of our weirdest NPCs in Fallout. Thank you so much for tuning in for this episode. And if you have any suggestions, any thoughts, anything you want to add to my lists or correct me on or which one you think is the best, let me know. I'll see you again next week. Stay safe out there in that crazy, crazy wasteland and try not to get stuck in a fridge. If you like this video, then why not check out this other one and continue learning more about Fallout. The Fallout Lorecast was brought to you by our patrons. 
huge shout out to them for their support. Head over to patreon.com slash falloutlorecast and take a look at all the cool things you can get for supporting this channel. Also, please like and subscribe, share with your friends, and if you want over 300 episodes of just the audio of this podcast, then check out the Fallout Lorecast on Spotify or Apple or anywhere else.